In this lesson, we're going to discuss curve fitting and polynomial interpolation. The objective of this lesson is to introduce you to some curve fitting and polynomial interpolation techniques. Topics covered are linearization, so nonlinear equations, Newton's interpolating polynomial, Lagrange's interpolating polynomial, divided difference method, solution to a differential equation using in interpolation techniques. For the intended learning outcomes, at the end of the lesson, you should be able to do the following. Use transformations to linearize some nonlinear equations. Use Newton's polynomial to perform an interpolation. Use Lagrange's polynomial to perform an interpolation. Use divided difference method to find an interpolating polynomial. Use Taylor's theorem to find an interpolating polynomial that approximates the solution to a differential equation. Use the method of successive approximation to solve a differential equation. In engineering applications, curve fitting is used to find a simple function to approximate a complicated function. It can be used to approximate solution to a differential equation. The idea of a curve Fitting is to estimate intermediate values from a given tabulated data, such as those in the steam table in thermodynamics. In some cases, you might want to find a simpler function that can represent a complicated function. We compute the values of this function at a number of discrete values and then we derive a simpler function to fit these values. So for example, a tran transcendental function may be exponential or trigonometric into a polynomial function. The estimation of values between known discrete values is called an interpolation method. Let's start with linearization of nonlinear functions. So some transformations such as logarithmic transformation can be used to represent the data where linear regression is applicable. For example, uh, y equals a raise, uh, times e place to b times x is an exponential model which can represent a solution to population growth or decay problems. So a and b here are constants. And then another example of nonlinear model, this is very popular in engineering, is the power equation, which is given by this equation y is equal to ax raised to b, where a and b are also constants. So let's have an example. So given a set of data for x and y, y is your dependent variable, x is your independent variable. We use a log logarithmic transformation that would fit a linear data with the known power equation. Our data with a power equation. So given a power equation, y is equal to a x raised to b, then taking the logarithm of both sides of the equation will give you log of y equals log of a times x raised to b. And then simplifying, that will give you log of a plus b log of x. So the new uh, dependent and independent variables will be for the independent will instead of x we will now have log of x and for the dependent variable we will have log of y 
Now, if X and Y are your uh, independent and uh, dependent variables, then your normal equations uh, using the least squares method will, will have the following entries. Okay. And the unknowns will be uh, A and B, where A is the intercept and then B is the slope. So, in the logarithmic equation or in the power equation, so we will have uh, log of A as the uh, intercept and then B is the slope. And then the entries of your normal equations would be as follows. So, we'll be needing columns for uh, log of x and log of log of y. And then square of log of x. And then a column for the product of log of x and log of y. Okay, so, we begin with taking the logarithm of x to the base 10. So we use log 10, then select x, and then you can uh, move the cursor downward to apply the formula to each of the other uh, entries in that column. And then similarly, so we have log of 10, and then select y. And then we square the log of x. And then log of x times log of y. And then sum of each column. Okay, so we can move the cursor to the right to get the sum of other columns. Okay, then we put the entries here. So this is now log of A. And then B. So we have eight data points. And then sum of uh, log of x is one. Sum of log of y. Another log of x. So just copy here. And then square of log of x. And then sum of log of y. And then the product. Now, we can use the matrix inverse solution and the unknowns will be the inverse matrix multiplied by the column of constants. So we get the matrix inverse, okay? And then on the first cell, you type M inverse. So this will be the Excel function. And then select make your matrix A, okay? And then control shift enter to generate the entries. And then, uh, for the unknowns, okay, we use multiplication of matrices. So, M mult on the first cell. And then, the first array will be the matrix inverse, comma, and then the column of constant. And then, control shift enter to generate the result. So, this will be your log of A, and then, which is the intercept. And then B is the slope. Okay, so you will have log of Y is equal to log of A, which is negative uh, 0 0.56 at 20 plus 1.98412. Uh, uh, the slope multiplied by log log of X. Now since the log log of a is negative 0.562 okay now to get the value of a in the power equation that would be 10 raised to negative 0 
0.5562 and that would be 0.27413. So your power equation should be y is equal to uh, a x raised to b. So a is 0.2741 and then b is uh, the slope 1.98. Or two. So this will be your power, power equation.